Hi everybody. Today uh, I will continue with the ideals. So uh, well, let, remember what was an ideal. So in a ring, so a subset is an ideal if uh, if x minus a is in the ideal whenever uh, x and y is in i, and also uh, if uh, r is in x is in uh, i, r is in r, then uh, x times r and r times x should be in i. So this is inside the ideals. So here's uh, if if uh, only this x times r is in i, it's called the right ideal, and if only r times when you multiply x elements of i from the left hand side, uh, if it is in i, then it's called the left ideal. Left ideal. So here is an example. Let me give an example. So let r be a ring and a is an element. Uh, then look at the set r times a. This is uh, by definition r times a such that r is in uh, r. So you can check that this is easily. Uh, this is an ideal. So if you take any two elements, let's say R A and S A from the set, then their difference is R minus S times A. This is in R A. And also if you multiply an element R times A by an element of S, so this is a generic element of R. So this is uh, S times R for every S in R. Uh, this is A. So this is an element of R. So the, the result is element of R A. So therefore, uh, R A is a left ideal, for example. So left ideal. So if R is competitive, but it, it will also be a right ideal anyway. So left ideal and the right ideal are the same if R is competitive. So similarly, uh, this, uh, a times R, namely A times R such that R is in R. This is a right ideal. Right ideal. Okay, let me do another example. So let I be an ideal. Let I be an ideal in a ring R. Uh, suppose that uh, suppose that it contains a unit. Suppose there is a unit uh, U in R such that such that uh, U is in I. So in this case, uh, since U is uh, since U is a unit, then U times V is equal to V times U is is one for some uh, V in R. So in this case, uh, one is uh, V times U or U times V. Since this is in uh, in the ideal I, uh, this one is in the ideal of Y. So that one uh, R contains uh, if uh, if uh, ideal contains some unit, then it contains one. The uh, so we assume that R is uh, R is uh, of course. Uh, R is a unit with uh, R is a ring with one. So if X is in R, then we can write X as uh, X times one, since this one is in R, uh, um, in I, uh, this is in I. So therefore every element of R is in I. So that means that R is equal to I, uh, R is equal to I. Namely, so we showed that uh, I, if, uh, an ideal contains a unit, then uh, I must be is equal to R. And the converse is clear. If I is in uh, R, then it contains the unit, namely one, for example, one, uh, it contains one. Okay, um, so here is another example. So let F be a field and I be an ideal. 
ideal of uh, uh, f, then if uh, i is not equal to zero, so zero, let, let's write like this, zero or that, that way. If i is not equal to zero, then it contains, there is an uh, element in u, which is not zero. Uh, so since, uh, so that u is not zero, since uh, u is not zero, then u is a unit in f, uh, so that i contains a unit. So by the above example, i is, is equal to f. So namely, uh, in a field R, so thus, we show that in a field F, field F, there are only, only two ideals. Namely, uh, the, the ideal zero, or, or we may just write like this, zero and F itself. So these are trivial ideals. Okay, uh, next. So next I will talk about uh, isomorphism theorems for rings. So let's talk about isomorphism theorems. Theorems. So just like in uh, group theory, we have the fundamental term of uh, fundamental isomorphism theorem for less right or, or first isomorphism theorem. Uh, it says, or, or it's called the fundamental isomorphism theorem for rings. So let uh, R and S be rings and uh, f r to s let, let's do not like this be an epimorphism so this two arrow shows that it is uh, onto uh, is an epimorphism uh, then uh, with kernel kernel uh, kernel of f then there is an there is an isomorphism. There is an isomorphism uh, f bar from R over the kernel of f to s. There is an isomorphism like that. Now such that such that this. Uh, isomorphism satisfies this f bar uh, q is equal to f. So where this uh, q is the quotient map from r to r over the kernel of phi. Remember this quotient map is defined as q of x is equal to the left coset of, uh, left coset of x. Okay, this is the isomorphism theorem. This is very useful. So, so namely, there is a uh, diagram like this. So if you have a homomorphism from epimorphism from a ring onto S like that, uh, then we have this uh, natural quotient map from R to uh, this R over the kernel of phi. Remember kernel of phi is an idea, so then we can divide by the kernel of I, uh, kernel of phi. So this, uh, so there is a map like that, uh, this way. So this, uh, okay. So here's a here's the proof. So let's define uh, define f bar from the uh, this quotient ring. Sorry, yeah, from the quotient ring to uh, S as follows: f bar of uh, x. The left coset of x, uh, left coset of x to be, let's define to be f of x. So this is defined from the, so this is an uh, equivalence class so that it is defined by this uh, representative. 
So we need to show, show that it is well defined. We need to show that it's well defined, namely, if the uh, left coset of uh, x, uh, left coset is represented by x and also y, uh, we need to show that the images are the same. So let uh, uh, the, suppose that x and y re represent the same left coset. So this, so that the, the difference is in the kernel of f. Oops, not p. The kernel of f. Oh, I always put f. These are all f, not phi. There is no phi. Everything is f. Did I write anything like this? Yeah, no. Oops, here also, kernel of f. Okay, kernel of f. Okay, kernel of f. Oh. I use uh, phi usually so that I'm confused. So therefore everything must be f. Next, so we define, uh, so that if the left cosets are the same, then the difference is in the kernel of f, so that f of x minus y is zero. So that means that f of x minus f of y is zero. So therefore f of x is equal to f of y, but this is uh, f of x is f bar of x plus the kernel of f, and uh, uh, f of y is by definition f bar of uh, y plus kernel of f, f. So that it doesn't matter if you rep represent uh, kernel of f by x or y, uh, the answer is the same. Uh, so that it is well defined. Uh, it's a homomorphism. F bar is a homomorphism. How do we see this? So let uh, suppose that x plus i and y plus i be i. Uh, let i is uh, be the kernel of f. Okay. So let i denote the kernel of f. So x plus i plus uh, x plus i plus y plus i. This is f bar of first de by definition of uh, the addition. It is x plus y. The left coset of x plus y. Uh, i namely this is kernel of f. So the, it's by definition it is f of x plus y. But f is uh, What happened? He stopped. Yeah, next page. Okay, so f of x plus y is uh, f uh, f of x plus f of y because f is a homomorphism, but f of y f of x is f bar of x plus i uh, plus f bar of y plus i. Okay, and also f bar of f bar of x plus i y plus i if we take this most product it is f bar of this product is x plus the left coset of uh, x plus x y plus i so remember i is uh, the kernel of f so it is by definition it is f of x y that is f of x times f of y because f is a homomorphism. So that f of x is f bar of x plus i and f of y is f bar of y plus i. So that uh, f preserves the multiplication. It preserves multiplication and uh, this is f is a homomorphism. F is a homomorphism. Now uh, show that F is onto, F bar is onto. So let uh, Y be in uh, S. 
since uh, f is onto, there is an x in R such that uh, f of x is uh, y. So in this case, if you look at the left coset of uh, left coset of uh, i, left coset of x, uh, it it is in the uh, R over i. Uh, it is by definition it is f of x which is y so therefore uh, f bar is on to and f bar is one to one so how do we see this suppose that the images of two elements are the same suppose that the images are the same so that by definition it is f of x is equal to f of y so that means f of x minus, uh, so f of uh, x minus y, if you look at f of x minus y, this is, since f is a homomorphism, this is f of x minus f of y. Uh, because f of x is equal to f of y, the, this difference is zero. So that means x minus y is in the kernel of f, which is i. So i, uh, x plus i is equal to, well, x minus x, x minus if x minus y is equal to i, x plus i is equal to y plus i. So that if the images of two elements are the same, then the elements must be the same. So therefore, uh, f is one to one. I uh, f is an isomorphism. Uh, so f bar is an isomorphism. Isomorphism. Uh, from R over I, namely this is kernel of uh, F to uh, S. And, uh, and also the last claim is that uh, if you, if we look at this uh, Q composed with F bar uh, at a point, at any point X in uh, R, uh, so this, it is F bar of QX. QX is the quotient map, uh, quotient map so that it is F bar of X plus I, I namely kernel of F. It is by definition F of X. So for every X, for every X in R. So therefore this F bar of Q is equal to uh, F. So namely this diagram, so when we have a diagram like this, kernel of, oops, kernel of F, this is F bar, this is Q, this diagram commutes. And that's the end of the story, this end of this theorem. Okay, this is the first isomorphism theorem. Uh, and the second, so here is a lemma if after this lemma. Uh, so let F uh, R to R and S be the R rings. And this is uh, F, let F be a homomorphism. The first thing is that if uh, J is an ideal in S, then F inverse of J is an ideal in R. And the second, uh, if I is an ideal in R, then we want to say that F of I is an ideal, ideal in uh, uh, R in S, but this is not true, so, uh, if I is an ideal and if 
this is true if uh, f is onto onto then it is true uh, so here is proof so let's check that uh, let me check the first one and then I will leave this second one to you as an exercise. The first one is, now suppose J, J is an ideal in S, the F inverse of J is an ideal. Now let uh, X and Y be in the F inverse of J. This is inside R of course, so, so that f of x and f of y are in j uh, since j is an ideal since j is an ideal uh, since j is an ideal uh, this uh, f of x minus uh, f of x minus f of y uh, is in j so I name it f of y is equal to f of x minus y is equal to f of x minus f of y is in j. So that means x minus y is in f inverse of j. So the first condition, first thing is that whenever if, if you take an, two elements from f inverse of j, then their difference is there. And now uh, let x be in f inverse of j and r be in r. Let's see whether uh, r, r, x times r if you look at x times r, which that is f of x times is f of x times f of r. Uh, this, uh, since x is in f inverse of j, this is in j. So if you multiply an element of j from the right hand side by an element of s, this is in s. So this is this would be in j because j is an ideal. And also, And also, f of uh, so that this this tells us that sorry this tells us that x r is in f inverse of j. And uh, uh, okay, f of x times r, which is f of r times f of x. Again, this is in j. This is in S, so that this is in uh, J because J is an ideal in S. So therefore, uh, R times X is in F inverse of J. So by these three statements, F inverse of J is an ideal, is an ideal in R. Okay, that's, uh, and I will leave the second. Uh, I will leave the second statement. I will leave the second statement as an exercise. Uh, this too is an exercise to you. Okay, and here's a theorem. exercise and that's the end of uh, proof theorem is that so let uh, so in the group here there is a corresponding version of this one so let f r to s uh, be an epimorphism and there is a one-to-one -one correspondence then let me write like that. Then, uh, yeah. Then there is a there is a one to one, namely bijection, one correspondence. Correspondence are uh, between the ideals. Ideals of S and uh, the ideals of R containing, containing the kernel of F. Okay. 
que no crean mucha luz. Por favor. Ok. So here is the proof. Uh, so this one to one correspondence is this one uh, proof. So, so the ideals, uh, ideals in, uh, so let, let's write like this J such that J is an ideal in uh, R and J contains I. I is the kernel of F. And the ideals, the set of ideals in uh, S. So let's define a function like that. The function is you take J to uh, or, or let's define this way, like this. So, so that, J be an ideal in S, an ideal. So then uh, this, I, I define phi, uh, phi of uh, X to be, phi of J to be F inverse of J. So that uh, F inverse of J, so that phi of J, which is the F inverse of J is an ideal in uh, R containing I, containing I is the kernel of F, kernel of F. So therefore, uh, so this way, so if you take an ideal in the set, so you get an ideal in that set. And clearly, Clearly, if J1 is equal to J, uh, if, uh, no. <coughs> uh, if F inverse of, if let phi of J1 is equal to phi of J2. So this implies that uh, F inverse of J1 is equal to F inverse of J2. Uh, since they are, they are both contain the kernel of F, since, since uh, uh, kernel of F is contained in J1 and J2, you can show that this J1 is equal to J2. So I will leave that, that part to you. And uh, also, uh, so this is one to one uh, on to, so th th this way uh, that's one to one. We show that phi is one to one, phi is going, if you like, phi it goes this way. Okay. Now on to, so that phi is one to one. Phi is on to, phi is not a homomorphism, it's just a function. On to, so let J be an ideal. ideal uh, with in R with uh, with uh, J contains I, I is the kernel of F of course. Uh, so that, so in this case, uh, J over the J over kernel of F is isomorphic to, uh, remember, remember R over kernel of F is isomorphic to, uh, is isomorphic to S. So if you, this is an ideal, J over kernel of F is an ideal in, uh, J over F is a, this is an ideal in R over kernel of F. If you look at its phi, that's equal to F inverse of J. Oops, this is an ideal, sorry, F bar. Uh, this is an ideal in S. So let's call, let's call this is, uh, then uh, you can show that, let's call, uh, this is K. Then uh, K 
of k is equal to j, namely uh, j, i .e. f inverse of k is equal to j. You can show this. I will leave that part to you. Okay, uh, I, I will proceed because otherwise it is it will take too long. Next one. Uh, this is uh, remember. Next one is the freshman theorem. Well, freshman, freshman is the first year student, remember? Freshman uh, theorem. Or freshman's uh, dream. <laughs> so let R be a ring. So freshman, why, why do, do we say freshman? Because uh, I, I will say that. So let R be a ring. R ring, I and J the ideals uh, in R with in R with I is in uh, J, then J over I is an ideal ideal in R over I and uh, when you divide r over i by j over i, these i's will cancel so that this is isom this becomes isomorphic to r over j. So that's freshman's dream, the freshman's theorem. Okay, uh, so here is a simple proof of this. So I will leave to you that to show that. J over A is an ideal in R over I. I will leave this to you. Uh, or or it will it, it will show up now. So let's define define a map F from R over I into uh, R over J by f of x plus i is equal to x plus j. Now, uh, let's see whether it is well-defined. So if x plus i is equal to x, y plus i, that means x minus y is in i, but x minus y is in, as i is in j, so that x minus y is in j, so that x plus j is equal to uh, y plus j, so that f of, by definition it is, this is f of x plus i, uh, this is y plus j. Uh, this is f of uh, x y plus i. So that it is well defined. So it doesn't matter which representative you choose, therefore f is a well defined map. Well defined. Uh, You can, one can easily show that it is a homomorphism. This is easy. I will skip this. Again, I will leave this as an exercise. Uh, let's look at the kernel of F. Kernel of F is, uh, remember the F is from F is from R over I to above. Lynch, let's move. Each of move. So X plus uh, I such that F of X plus I is equal to zero. But zero element is I. Uh, J, sorry, zero element of, remember in the R over J, zero element is uh, J. 
so that uh, this is at the all points in I such that uh, X, all left cosets of I such that X plus J is equal to J. So F of X plus I is defined as X plus J. So that means it is in X plus I such that X is in J. So that this is precisely the X o, uh, I, J over I. So by the first isomorphism theorem, by the isomorphism theorem, the first one, fundamental theorem of uh, uh, rings, by the fundamental theorem, uh, R over I over the kernel of F, which is J over, but in particular, J over I is an ideal here. So that this, this quotient, this is kernel of uh, F, this is isomorphic to S. Well, S, not S, S is R over I, R over J. So you can cancel those I's. Namely, why it's called the Freshman's theorem, it is, remember one over two over three over two is, two, is, two cancels, you get one over three. <laughs> so that's what we call, that's why we call the Freshman's theorem. Okay, next, one more theorem, isomorphism theorem. Uh, it is, uh, let R be a ring. Let R be a ring. Let R be a ring. I and J be ideals. Ideals in R, then I plus J and I intersection J are ideals. And we showed this before that the I plus uh, this, uh, I plus J and I intersection J are ideals. And here it says that as I plus J over I is isomorphic to I uh, J over I intersection J. Uh, let me outline the proof of this statement. Uh, proof, outline, I will just outline because I don't have time almost, uh, I have one more minute for the 40 minutes. Uh, so the proof it goes like that. So you define a map homomorphism from J into I plus J over I. You define it like that, F of uh, X is equal to X plus I. So there's no uh, concern about the well-definedness. It is just a homomorphism. And they show that it is onto, it is a homomorphism, F homomorphism. Uh, and it is on to, uh, if you take an element, I will leave this as an exercise. Uh, exercise. And it is, uh, if you look at the kernel of F, kernel of F is all the X in J such that F of X is equal to I, but F of X is, uh, F of X is, uh, X plus I, that's equal to I. So that means this is uh, X, uh, this is uh, X, X in J such that X is in I. So it is precisely uh, I intersection J. So therefore, uh, therefore, uh, J over I intersection J is isomorphic to I plus J over I. And that's the end of the proof. Okay, let's finish.